So after a few years in the business, we um, probably like 10, maybe eight, we sold our company to Kelwood Corporation for a lot of money. That was a payday, I paid off all my bills. Which is another thing, when you build up something, you usually build it up to sell it. So don't be too attached to your name and to your logo, because whatever you started that was hot, you can go start it again. Like Donna Karen, she does not own Donna Karen. Tommy Hilfiger does not own Tommy Hilfiger. They work, they're employees of the company, someone else owns it. Donna Karen has a whole other line and collection now called Urban Zen. It's not Urban Zen by Donna Karen because she doesn't own that name anymore, but you know that's still her. Like Harvey Weinstein, um, started a film company, he's a big you know, producer, he started a film company years ago and it was called Miramax, which was his mom and dad's name, Mira and Max. And he was so attached to this name and he sold the, the company for hundreds of millions of dollars and he didn't know what to do. And then he went and created the Weinstein Company. So he's still him. So we went and sold our company um, and I stayed on, Russell and I stayed on as directors and, and executives of the company. And then a few years later, Russell left and now he's doing other things, so he has, what other lines does he have? Argyle Culture, Russell Simmons Collection, Tartan Blue, there was something else. What's that Walmart? American something, American Classic. And you go on about your business and you do it respectfully, so that's okay. So we're still friends and we still love each other. He was on my little podcast today. Did you guys see our little podcast? Well, some of you were there, because I know. Um, so I think that's kind of the state of the business right now, and I'm still at Kelwood Corporation, which is Fat Fashions, and I went on to create different lines, so I have Baby Fat, um, I have, which also has girls, I have Fat Farm, which has boys, I started KLS Collection, which was a higher-end contemporary line, so it's a little more expensive, like 200 to $300 things, and back a couple years ago, that was fabulous, now it's not because no one can afford that. So then I went and made Fabulosity, which was at J.C. Penney's, which was off the principles of my book. And at the time, when I was going to J.C. Penney's, not a lot of people were going to J.C. Penney's and Sears and Targets. All of the consumers were, but none of the designers thought it was cool to do that. You had a small handful that did do it. I think Vera Wang is there and different people, but now everybody and their mamas at Targets or Sears or Penney's or Walmart, and we did it first or very early, yeah. So I, I made Fabulosity and then um, most recently I launched at Macy's which is at select Macy's stores now and online, that's a plug, write it down. Couture by Kimura with a K, Couture by Kimura and nothing in that collection is like over 50 bucks. So that's what I call recession proof shopping and it's great fashion, it looks great and you know I think that people need even in a recession, women are gonna go get dressed. Guys too, but if you have a household, a man and a woman, and it's a dollar that's found, who's gonna get that dollar after the kids are okay? The woman. She's gonna buy her makeup and her skincare, and she's gonna get her jeans. And so, and I also have a diffusion, a diffusion line, which is at Walmart, and it's called um, Fat Silver. Fat fashion silver, and that's like one or two jeans with the cat. And I know some people were a little mad at that, and like, how could you put things at Walmart? But people go to Walmart to get their diaper and their formula, and even a microwave, and they might need to get a little pair of jeans. And they're not shopping at the mall, and what they're buying at Walmart is not what you guys are buying at the mall, so don't worry. But I feel like fashion should be inclusive of everyone, and no one should really be excluded. Thank you.